We all know our world changed dramatically in the Industrial Revolution. But what if you have a magical Industrial Revolution instead of a coal-powered one? What happens when magic and technology merge, leading to an Industrial Revolution powered by arcane energies? What impact does that have on manufacturing, transportation, and daily life? What events lead up to this kind of revolution? And what are the potential after effects? That is what I want to talk about today. Welcome to another episode of Just in Time Worlds with your host, Marie Mullaney. Let's talk first about the concept of an industrial magical revolution. The Industrial Revolution in our world refers to a period of rapid economic, technological, and social transformation that began in the mid-18th century in Great Britain. It spread across Europe and North America very rapidly. This period saw a shift from agrarian and handicraft-based economies to industrialized machine-driven production systems. Key innovations such as the steam engine, of course, and mechanized textile production. Remember my video on spinning and weaving and how much labor is involved in that? Well, that all changed in the Industrial Revolution. Also, it improved transportation systems. It facilitated the growth of factories and urban centers. The Industrial Revolution had far reaching impacts on society, including increased productivity, a higher standard of living for many, and significant environmental impact that we are still dealing with. A magical industrial revolution, on the other hand, would involve integration of magic into the technological world, into the economic world, and into your social systems. This fusion of magic and industry would lead to the development of new tools, new machines, new production methods, all of it powered by arcane energies or operated by magical beings, you know. A magical industrial revolution could have similar far-reaching effects on the society, transforming the way people work and live and interact with the world around them. In such a revolution, key elements might include things like magical resources, like discovering and harnessing new sources of magical energy that makes magic accessible to everyone. These these resources could be natural, i.e. you discover these magical crystals that can be used to power all magic, or it can be some other source like the divine suddenly blessing the world or spirits or whatever the case may be. You could have some resource that plays the role of coal, except that instead of just coal, which is now powering our steam engines and all the rest of that, you have a magical resource that is now powering your magic, which has become integrated into your societies. Of course, it could also be a magical innovation instead of a magical resource, so the development of new magical technologies or spells. This is particularly useful if you kind of use a science magic kind of approach, and in the same way as we develop technology to eventually give rise to the Industrial Revolution, so you could give rise to the magical revolution through the advancement of your magic to reach this point of steam engines and golems farming for you or whatever the case may be. And speaking of golems farming for you, if you were now able to produce enough magical beings to replace the labor of humans, like robotics, etc., you could definitely expand rapidly into an industrial revolution using constructs or automatons or so on to replace human labor. Bearing in mind that you are going to see societal transformation with this, the widespread adoption of magic would have a profound impact on your world. 
There would be changes in social structures, in economic systems, and in political power dynamics. Magical industrial revolution might create new opportunities for those with magical abilities. It might exacerbate existing social inequalities. It could even trigger entirely new conflicts over the control and distribution of magical resources and technologies. Basically, all of the effects that the Industrial Revolution had in our world are likely to happen with a magical Industrial Revolution as well, excepting maybe the impact that it had on the environment with the output of coal into the atmosphere. So if you enjoyed that basic discussion of magical industrial revolution, hit the thumbs up button and let's delve into the economic ramifications. As with any industrial revolution, a magical revolution would lead to a significant shift in the economic landscape. Enchanted machinery and automation would revolutionari revolutionize your production process, allowing for faster and more efficient manufacturing of goods. This would result in increased productivity and lower costs, which could lead to higher wages and improved living standards for workers, eventually. Magical transportation methods such as teleportation, enchanted vehicles, flying ships, and so on, would change the movement of goods and people. This would make it easier and faster to transport raw material, finished products, and agricultural goods to new markets. Now, this new, these new markets would then enable people to sell their goods across the world, which would open up economic opportunities for manufacturers, for farmers, and for people who use raw materials. This would lead to a much more interconnected trade world in terms of setting up your world's trade. You are no longer stuck to just overland trade routes or sea routes or so on. You now have magical movement like steam engines or teleportation or the like. The harnessing of arcane energies to power industries would be a game changer. This new source of power could potentially be cleaner and more sustainable than our coal methods. So if you could replace coal with magic, you could reduce pollution and the environmental impact and still get the benefits of technology, which would seriously be amazing. Agriculture would also change because you would have enchanted tools that could work for themselves or maybe spells that enhance crop growth, leading to increased production. And potentially that could help you combat hunger and poverty and so on. Now, as I spoke about before, if your world has got druid-type magic, and check out druids in my information card, but if your world has got druidic-type magic that helps you make agriculture more sustainable, you would definitely have magic embedded in your world already in terms of the agriculture. So your industrial revolution could be driven by that agricultural magic now expanding to become so much more, expanding to become a powered resource because somebody has found the secret crystals that allows druids to just keep casting. And that allows you to solve the food problem, which allows a small amount of farmers to feed a large population, which gives a lot of people leisure time, which means that productivity can dramatically increase. There is another way in which uh, industrial revolution, of course, affects a world, and that is communication. Suddenly, banks, cust companies, governments, they can all talk to each other easily. News can travel across the continent. Data changes everything. Technology explodes because innovators can talk to each other 
And of course, rumors and lies find a whole new way to travel. And do remember my video on propaganda in fantasy world. So thumbs up for economic change. And let's talk about daily life in an industrial magical revolution. So people in this world, would their lives would change much as ours did after the Industrial Revolution. There would be urbanization. People would be drawn to the cities for employment opportunities in magical works. This means that your cities expand to accommodate the influx of workers and their families. Also, your villages out in the hinterlands, they're going to decline. So you're going to get more and more ghost towns dotting the countryside. With new industries and technologies emerging, there would be greater demand for skilled workers. And this could result in a far increased emphasis on education and training, leading to higher literacy rates throughout your world and a more educated workforce, including people going into tertiary education. Magical advancements in medicine and healthcare could lead to improved treatments for disease and injuries, potentially increasing the life expectancy and improving your overall public health of your people. People could go from living for, I don't know, 30, 40 years to living 60, 70 years, depending on the nature of your rev revolution. And of course, remember what I said about, you know, small number of farmers feeding a lot of people, leisure time. Well, leisure time and entertainment will become a thing. As people's standard of living improves, they should have more leisure time and disposable income available to them. And this will lead to the growth of new forms of entertainment, such as theatres, maybe enchanted amusement parks, maybe even magical sports leagues like Avatar The Last Airbender. Entertainment will no longer be something that just the leisure class uses. It will find its mass market. So if you enjoyed that discussion of the daily life impact of a magical industrial revolution, hit the thumbs up button and let's talk about the events and potentially people leading up to this revolution. Several factors would contribute to the onset of an industrial magical revolution, much as the industrial revolution was driven by certain things in our world. The discovery of new magical energies, like a breakthrough of a new source of arcane energy, could provide the spark you're looking for. This new energy source could be harnessed and used to power industries and to fuel technological advancements. There would also likely be visionary individuals, magical innovators, who would play a crucial role in merging magic and technology. So let's take a look at who those people were in our world and how you could adapt it for your world. You had to know this was coming. I love drawing on real history. James Watt developed the steam engine and that absolutely revolutionized the way we harnessed energy. It powered factories, railways, steamships. Now in our magical world, there could be a person like James Watt, let's call him Jaron Wormbane, who invents a magical engine that taps into those arcane energies, propelling machines and transport systems. The invention of the arcane engine by Wormbane would be a key catalyst for the industrial magical revolution. So in our world, Ellie Whitney invented the cotton gin, and that changed the cotton industry by simplifying the process of separating cotton seeds from cotton fibers. In our fantasy world, we could envisage a similar inventor, perhaps named Ilara Windrider, who creates a spell or enchanted device that streamlines the production of magical materials, such as enchanted cloth or enchanted metals, by automating a process that was previously done by people. This would lead to significant increases in production 
And that, of course, fuels the magical industry's growth. Basically, as you can produce more of this item en masse, the price of the item drops because it's no longer so exclusive. More people get access to it. You make money in bulk. That money fuels more growth and more growth and things grow cheaper until it's basically just the cost of the raw material that goes into the cost of the item. And that's how things like the cotton gin revolutionized clothing in our world and how it could do it in your world with this magical industrial revolution. In our world, there was also a guy called Henry Bessemer who mass-produced steel. Now, this was critical because steel is how we create things like skyscrapers and railways. In fact, without steel, without this mass production of steel, you don't have a railway. You can't make the rails without steel. So in our magical world, we could have Harold Bright Steel who discovers a new method to create magically reinforced steel, which allows for the construction of towering magical buildings and enchanted transportation networks. This would, of course, transform your landscape and the economy of your fantasy setting. And then don't forget about communication and Samuel Morse's invention of the telegraph. In the same way, you could have an inventor that invents a communication method that passes data along in your world. And for more details on my thoughts on communication and fantasy worlds, check out the information card. I do want to talk about those that would oppose an industrial revolution. And we saw that in our world with the Luddite movement. The Luddite movement emerged during the early 19th century in England at the height of the Industrial Revolution. The Luddites were a group of skilled artisans and workers who opposed the rapid changes brought by industrialization. Specifically, they were concerned about the introduction of new machineries and technologies in the textile manufacturing work as this innovation threatened their livelihoods by replacing skilled workers with less skilled, lower paid laborers. And in some cases, it even automated jobs entirely. And this is a downside of your industrial revolution. There are people who are going to lose their jobs and be made redundant by this revolution. And that is not going to go over well with those people. It is unlikely that your government would have much sympathy for these Luddite equivalents. Indeed, in our world, the Luddite movement was met with strong response from the British government, who deployed troops to protect factories and enacted strict laws to suppress the uprisings. Some Luddite protesters were arrested, tried, and executed, or transported to penal col colonies like Australia. So you're probably going to see the same kind of activity in your magical industrial revolution. Eventually, an industrial revolution does lift up the entirety of your population, and it does increase social mobility. I wouldn't want to live in a world pre the Industrial Revolution because it was rough on most people to live in that kind of world. But the actual revolution itself is pretty freaking brutal. And the people who are displaced, they're going to hit back. Now, despite the decline of the Luddite movement, the term Luddite is still in our language as a label for individuals who oppose technological advancements, often due to impact on the society, job, or the environment. In your world, it could be equally interesting to alter your language and to pick a term for these people, like maybe you could call them arcane breakers or something like that, people who oppose this magical industrial revolution and who strive to not have it happen. 
So give some thought to the people displaced by your magical industrial revolution and what they would call themselves and what the governments of your world's response would be to these Luddite equivalents. So you can see how you can take the events of our industrial revolution and fit them into your world with as much or as little as you need for your industrial revolution. And if you enjoyed that discussion of the history and innovators of the industrial revolution, hit the thumbs up button. And let's talk about worlds that implement this kind of revolution. First, we really must talk about Eberron. In Eberron, which is a D&D role-playing world, there is a unique blend of magic and technology. So they incorporate magical advancements like airships, lightning-powered trains, and enchanted constructs that serve various functions in their society to drive the economics of their society. In Eberron, the magical industry is an essential part of everyday living. It powers the economy, transportation, and communication. It's a world I really enjoy playing in because they really put some thought into what D&D magic would do to a setting. So I highly advise that you check it out if you want some inspiration for how to do a magical industrial revolution. Another great example is Avatar The Last Airbender, specifically the Fire Nation. The Fire Nation is a civilization that relies heavily on its ability to bend fire, using it as a source of power for various purposes. They've harnessed the power to create advanced technologies like steam-powered ships that our boy uses to chase the Avatar all over the world with. They've used it to create tanks and drills. The Fire Nation's industrial revolution is built on the foundation of firebending, emphasizing the central role of their magic in their society and their military might. So editing Marie decided that recording Marie really didn't do a good job of taking Brandon Sanderson's work on the world of Scudrill, the Mistborn world, and how he used the Industrial Revolution there. So you're going to get just my voice and the whiteboard for this section where I talk about Mistborn. So the first trilogy of Mistborn takes place in a pre-industrial era, and the second trilogy takes place during a period reminiscent of the Industrial Revolution. In Scudrill, you have a unique magic system called Allomancy that allows individuals to gain extraordinary abilities by ingesting and burning specific metals. So in Mistborn, you have technological innovations driving the Industrial Revolution. You see the shift from an agrarian society in the first series to a society where technology and industry become increasingly significant. In the second trilogy, which takes place centuries after the first, we see the introduction of railways, firearms, and more advanced machinery all influenced by the magical abilities of Alamancy, which we'll discuss a little more a little further on. You also see heavy urbanization as people move from rural areas to the cities in search of work and opportunity. This urban growth leads to the development of distinct social classes and an increased focus on commerce much as it did in our world. You also see a dramatic social shift through the series. First in power dynamics, where the initial trilogy is a very feudal-like society, even after the displacement of the tyrant known as the Lord Ruler. By the second trilogy, you have a more democratic form of government leading to people being able to be involved in their government and coming from various social backgrounds being able to influence politics. You also have social 
mobility starting to be a thing and people from various social classes can improve their standing in society, especially with the advancements in technology created by your increased understanding of magic. And speaking of magic, let's talk about the role of allomancy in the Industrial Revolution of Scadrial. The unique properties of metals in allomancy and their ability to grant allomancer's powers lead to the development of very novel technologies that harness these powers. There's, for example, this interaction between iron and steel allomancy that allows the creation of technologies like the metallic railway that relies on the push and pull abilities of allomancers to propel the train cars. Allomancers also find employment in various industries, using their magical abilities to improve efficiency, enhance production, and provide specialized services. Like coin shots, allomancers who can push on nearby metals, and lurchers, allomancers who can pull on nearby metals, could be employed in transportation or construction while tin eyes, allomancers with enhanced senses, might work as scouts or in security. The abilities of allomancers, when combined with industrial machinery and processes, contribute to increased productivity and economic growth. The use of allomantic powers in tandem with new technologies allows for the more efficient production methods and much better utilization of resources, which drives economic expansion and creates new opportunities for businesses and individuals. As a result of all this, people started to view allomancers as part of their societies. They were no longer majors standing apart. They now viewed allomancers as integral to their their society. And this leads to a change in social structures and relationships. Brandon Sanderson, in these two trilogies, really delved into the effects of using magic in your industrial revolution. He did, of course, have technological improvements, and coal was utilized, and there are other resources that is exploited. But allomancy integrated with and increased that industrial revolution. And it is a really good example of drawing from the events of our industrial revolution and incorporating it into a fantasy industrial revolution. But how do you build a magical industrial revolution if that's what you're looking to do in your world? First, you should think about what is the source of the magic and how is it harnessed? Where did it originate? What is the mechanics of magic in your world? Is it a natural resource, a gift from the deities, or an innate ability? How is magic accessed by individuals and groups? If you want to do this revolution thing, it can't be just a few people who have access to magic. It needs to be massively available in order to drive a revolution. How can you incorporate magic and technology? You can't, ju- you can't drive a magical industrial revolution without the technology portion of it. So your magic has to drive your technology in order to reach the point where you can drive an industrial revolution. Whether that's through golems or through powering steamships or however you do it, it's got to in some way increase economic power. And then, of course, what is the societal impact of all of this? How do people react when this starts happening? Who are your Luddites? Who are your innovators? Who is driving invention and who is trying to hold it back. What happens to people who are suddenly obsolete? What happens to wealth distribution and social mobility in your society? Remember that all of those things can create tensions, and tension 
is where you can write story. So don't be afraid of taking that industrial revolution and really amping up societal pressure using it. And then, of course, do think about the environment and whether the sudden magical innovation has an impact. Do you have pollution? Do you suddenly have magical waste the way we have nuclear waste that needs to be disposed of? Do people need to mitigate these effects? You know, are there downsides to this industrial revolution? And how do people address these challenges? And those are my thoughts on a magical industrial revolution in a fantasy world. If you want to support this channel, links to my books down below, or you can hit the join button right over there for cool channel perks. If you enjoyed this video, check out Propaganda in a Fantasy World, and I will see you soon for another one.